Oh, Cody, you're muted. Oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. There you go. Off to a great start, as you can tell, friends. This is making an impact. <laughs> the natural, Astro Pizarro, apparently already ready to go. I'm the foe, Cody the foe. Clearly out of touch because I've been away for a week. Uh, here to talk there some impact wrestling from tonight. Astrid, how are you? <laughs> how, how are you feeling this week? Doing a lot better this week. I, get, I feel a little bit more refreshed. How are you feeling tonight? Um, a lot less stressed. <laughs> It's it's nice to have had some downtime yeah. this week to just relax and kind of get into the routine and get into a rhythm and not have to be stressing about what tomorrow may or may not hold. So uh, tonight's impact, I was able to actually sit down and pay some attention to it and really, really enjoy our, our road to under siege right now. Yes. Um. Missed quite a bit last week. Um, hopefully you and Parrish held the show together <laughs> in, in my absence. Um, excited about what happened last week. Excited to get into this week. Um, let's just jump right into it with, with BTI, Astrid. Uh, you had a chance to catch it, eh? Yeah. Okay. So on before the impact this week, we ended up with a tag team match. Um kind of uh, an unusual teaming and pairing of sorts that we got the design um, with Diener and Khan wrestling and angels at ringside taking on swingers dungeon of Johnny Swinger and Zicky Dice still on the road to 50. Um, I know last time I was here two weeks ago, I was hoping that that was the end of swingers dungeon and that Johnny had kicked Zicky to the curb and we would actually get a proper Zicky Dice singles run. Clearly, we're not there yet. We get Swingers Dungeon, Team Fun, Team, you know, Silly, taking on Team Serious of the design on the road to their Under Siege match. How did you feel about the match itself? This was better than the match last week. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, this very goes. Hello, everybody. At that BTM match, exactly what I want from wrestling, fun, stupidity, and Johnny Swinger. <laughs> match of the year for me and Master. <laughs> It was definitely better than last week. I'll say you that very at least. Um, no, I feel like this was a lot better. Like the the comedy, I like Zeki and Swinger together, so I feel like this was a better pairing, and I feel like it helped um, with like showing off like Dina and Con in a different light uh, with these two. But I think what more the match, what made the match for me more than anything was the commentary because Gia <laughs> had so many comments that just definitely made me laugh that I had to write them down when she said them, and I had to go back and like. And note them um because there was a part towards the beginning that swinger says he wants con in the corner and they were and then gia goes well uh, johnny swinger is a con man himself um <laughs> and then she goes he's got something up his sleeve i mean bandana and i was like oh no she got me with that one she like brought me out of my concentration with those comments um and then she's like oh look at him trying to do a test of strength but i don't think he realized that con is taller than him so it's not gonna work out for him and like him going in the corner trying to do it that way and i was like that was funny to he's, watch. he's lacking in um, the height department <laughs> yes i like I, I missed writing that one down but i love that line too um and not only that but the part about the distraction is something that we see from the design so often i missed the part of angels but they pointed it out like right away it's like oh angels is playing with you know swingers car in the front uh, that he uses for his entrance, but you know, having Dino do the destruction, Angels being involved in there too. I was like, holy crap! Like, I feel like in this one, both Swinker and Ziggy got really like beat up in like not a bad way, but like good enough for that they weren't in the ring for a while, especially uh, Swinger. And I love the part of like when it's Ziggy doing the hot tag and they they kind of go towards the corner of Swinger, and Swinger's like, yeah, I'm not getting in there after I got beat up <laughs> so long ago. And they're like, yeah, he's smart enough to get in there again. Um, but uh, yeah, I loved and even the ending of it too, um, from like beginning to end. So I feel like this was better than what I saw last week for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I did take note that I feel like this is Swinger's longest match of the year. Um, probably an even <laughs> longer than that. I can't remember a time that Johnny Swinger has been in the ring for as long as he was for this match or as uh, like not even just being in the ring, like as a tag team with this match was probably the longest match I've seen him involved in. Um, and Zicky, I know we had the one match in Atlanta where Zicky wrestled his former partner and his friend where he went quite a long time, but I do feel like this was a, another good showing for Zicky Dice. Um, 
both in while he was getting beaten down, but also when he got that hot tag, he actually looked really good as a hot tag coming yeah. in up until Khan finally mm-hmm. just shut him down and put him down. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like it, like the performance tonight was definitely like exactly what I wanted like the match to be last week. So that's why I feel like I enjoyed it better tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and yeah, Barry messing with Swinger's ring was the heel move of the night. Absolutely. Um, not not just messing with it. He took and threw it up the ramp at one point and swung the gate open as it bounced around. Uh, that was our BTI match, though. Ultimately, uh, as you could have guessed, the design get the wing, uh, the win. Con with the power bomb to Zicky Dice, shutting down his his hot tag momentum. Um, and then chasing Swinger out of the ring and off onto the apron as he hands uh, Zicky Dice over to Diener for what they, uh, the announced team announced as the antidote, I guess, is the name of Diener's DDT now. Good to know, I uh, know that. Heading into the main show, we got a recap of Macklin versus Rhino last week and the beatdown that ensued afterwards. Um, we've received word that Rhino ended up being injured from that. I believe on social after last week that he's out for an undisclosed amount of time. And then we get a recap of Deanna Perrazzo and Jordan Grace versus the Coven, including uh, Trinity coming down after the match, saving Jordan from the two-on-one beatdown by the Coven. And then we get into the main show. And our favorite wrestler, the X Division champion, Trey Miguel. Taking on Laredo Kid in a non-title match. Um, honestly, this match I, I just enjoyed. I, I didn't take a ton of notes down on it. It really was just a great X Division match. Nothing too special, nothing too fantastic throughout the match. I didn't feel um, just Trey finding new ways to win and new ways to really kind of s- s- solidify his heel persona. Uh, taking off the mask of Laredo Kid at the end and pinning him while he's trying to keep his face covered. Um, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm really kind of getting behind this tray now. It's been a long time coming. I, I really kind of stood um, stood behind his skill all along, but the heel tactics felt like a bit much for a little while. But um, I really feel like he's starting to get more and more and more comfortable in this as he goes along. Yeah, I love that. I feel like every single match that Trey's in, we do see something different from him, and I've been enjoying that lately, especially with this run. Um, I love starting off like the match, like not even like a moment or two into it. Um, Loretto Kid having that dive by the barricade and the way that Trey's selling it, it looked incredible. Um, but the only part that kind of bothered me was that when Loretto Kid was doing the submission on Trey, he kind of couldn't lock it in on like correctly, and it took him a moment. Be- like he went back and like locked it in afterwards. Um, but even after that, um, there's a part that Trey does a little kick to the back of a Laredo Kid's back uh, head, and I like the way he did that part too. But overall, I I feel like there was innovative offense on Trey's end, which I really enjoyed that more than anything. Uh, when this one, like you said, him removing the mask, it just the only thing that it, it reminded me a lot of what happens in the AEW, especially with the, the Lucha Bros. They always try to mess up with their masks. And just, no, I hate that. I've seen it so often in AEW that now I hate it. I really do. Like, why does it have to be the mask? Okay, I'll forgive you because it was this time train. This one time and that's <laughs> it. Don't reveal it afterwards. Um, but no, it's like it's, you know, not nothing out of the, uh, out of the ordinary in the fact that we knew the trade was going to win the match. And here, um, I was not expecting Laredo to win it whatsoever. But I feel like overall, it was a great match. It was a great choice for an opener too. I feel like they have a great pacing. And it was a great showing off for Trey as well. Yeah, I'm. I'm always behind the X Division, and I've always been a firm supporter of the X Division being your best opening match. You put these guys out in the ring to start the show, you get everybody going, you get the speed, the the pace up on the night, and then you can go in waves from there, uh, as opposed to starting with a slow plotting match and then having to try and pick it up later. <laughs> and uh, no forgiveness for Trey. Bad Trey. That comes from Ed, not from me. I forgive Trey. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. and I remember seeing this, I think it was uh, yesterday, so now that Barry said Laredo Kid also reminded me of it, uh, he said Laredo Kid never has had a bad match, 
uh, I don't know if it was yesterday, and I know I sent it to you, uh, the match is happening, so I wouldn't forget about it. Uh, Laredo Kid announced that he's officially a free agent as well. So I don't know if he's part of the tapings for next week, but if not, this probably is his last match in Impact for now. Um, Laredo Kid has always kind of been one of those guys with Impact, though, where he feels like he's more of a one-off here and there contract as opposed to like a mm-hmm. full contract. So he may be somebody that kind of comes and goes as they as they need kind of fillers if possible. But um, if he does end up landing somewhere else, hopefully he lands on his feet and all the best for him. Uh, After the match, Trey Miguel grabs a mic, um, starts demanding that everyone has to start putting respect on his name, um, that he hasn't gotten the respect he deserves since winning the title. And he's going to take this entire show hostage and he's just going to sit down in the ring and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And we go to a commercial break. (laughs) <laughs> and I have to sit through a commercial break and then get back to the show whereas Astra just gets to go from one segment to the next because she watches on YouTube <laughs> um, but it still is kind of awkward because it kind of gives you like kind of like a black screen for a moment while they do the commercial break that we don't get to watch and then he's right away back to it it's still in the ring so it's nice to have that continuity of like it's like probably like a second moment and just and that's it um after the commercial break, we get Chris Sabin obviously coming out to the ring as Trey's contender for the title at Under Siege. Um, really, really enjoyed Sabin on the mic here. He mm. he really hit a lot of different levels with this. You know, he understands why Trey feels disrespected. He understands that Trey hasn't gotten a ton of respect, but he also throws Trey under the bus, saying, "You know, you get what you give, and you haven't given much respect." starting with when you won that title and decided to spray paint and tag all over it. By doing that, you disrespected everybody who's ever held the title before. And then he goes on to name drop some of the greatest champions of the history of Impact. The AJ Styles, Loki, Sanjay Dutt, Amazing Red, Speedball Mike Bailey, Alex Shelley, Petey Williams, Josh Alexander, Rich Swan, and says... You know, and then includes himself in that by saying, you know, we Mm -hmm. set this title up to be as important as it is. And you're basically kicking our names in the dirt for by doing what you're doing with it right now. And then goes on to declare again that he will become a nine time X Division champion at Under Siege Mm -hmm. and tells Trey to get out of his ring. And I was a little surprised that Trey just obliged and got out here. Mm hmm. The first thing I thought would save in interrupting this too is like I'm definitely not used to the, the motor sitting machine guns doing things separately. It feels so odd seeing Chris Saban <laughs> by himself. I was not used to that at all. Uh, but I definitely love the promo from here. And like I also like that part of like him name dropping all these people. Like he said, you know, AJ Loki, um, he said Jerry Lynn, Amazing Red, Shelly too, um, Peter Williams, or Jay Dutt, Jay Lethal, um, even Bailey. I like how Bailey's more one of the few like newest ones that he mentioned. Um, he's a swan and Alexander and I love how he goes with this nine time thing and in nine times I was like okay I, I don't want to hear nine times it doesn't have the same feel <laughs> as it does when you like say Booker five times but yeah no it, no it's too much it takes too long uh, but I love him doing that too but yeah I feel weird that uh, the way Trey has been lately more like a rebel in that aspect in, in this particular reign it felt very odd to see him just like leave the ring as Sabian was saying it it's like, yeah, it's something that I didn't think it was going to happen when it happened. So that definitely shocked me. But overall, I love how Saban addressed himself in this uh, promo here. And the way he went back, was like, I'm Chris Saban, bitch. And it's like, get out of my ring. <laughs> and the way he said it, just like, I love that veteran feel to this, uh, to this, to the character, the way he's portraying it uh, towards Trader. I loved it. Yeah, as that is saying, five times sounds so much better. I, I don't have the patience for the nine times Saban. I really don't. <laughs> As long as it doesn't okay. end up in Chris Saban in the ring doing a spin rooney we're okay. <laughs> don't don't wish that upon us, thanks. No. <laughs> uh, did you want to kind of continue, Astrid, into the next segment there as well? Yeah. Uh, so we had last week uh, during an interview, Trinity was having an interview, and we had Jay interrupt her, and he's like, yeah, let's take a picture. And then at the end, she asked Jay, uh, like, who is that? And she goes, oh, that's Jay, he works here. And that was just, like, the simple explanation that we got. Uh, but I love seeing the interaction on Twitter later that Jay posts a picture, and then Trinity tweets separately, oh, hey, Jay, thanks for the picture. Um, and obviously, we know that being Jay, somebody involved with Giselle, we knew something else was going to come out of this. 
And um, for those that didn't know, uh, Giselle and uh, Gil Kim have been in Amazing Race uh, teaming up together. That's why we haven't seen Giselle the last couple of weeks on TV in any way, shape, or form. So um, I like how Jay comes to her. He goes, well, I got in trouble for the picture that we got last, that like you took last week. I think is what he told her. And she goes, you took? I'm like, you said, you're the one that posted it. Like, it wasn't me. And he said, well, Giselle has been injured and she hasn't been clear. She won't be clear until next week. But she didn't like it. She was pissed about the picture. Uh, but And then Trinity said, well, she's so pissed. Tell her to tell me to her face because I have an outfit contract for Under Siege that I can have a match. And then J- Jay just kind of tells her, like, I'll tell Giselle. And then we'll see kind of what she says. And then he leaves. Um, again, this just uh, it just made me laugh but, you know, versus when you continue what happened last week. And seeing you know, the way he's like, oh, you posted the picture. He goes, don't gaslight me. Like, it was you that posted it. Um, I like the back and forth between these two. I feel like it was just funny overall, which I wasn't expecting from Che. Um, but I love how Trinity went right away to, like, you know, I have that open contract. I don't have an opponent. So let's challenge yourself for this. Just makes sense because we haven't seen yourself the last couple of weeks. But it felt kind of weird at the same time, you know, starting this match with, without Giselle being involved, but then Giselle being involved in the, last, in the match when it's finalized. Um, but overall, I think it was a like a nice quick segment to announce this match later on. Yeah. Way to break kayfabe, Astrid. We heard in this segment yeah. that Giselle's been hurt, and that's why she hasn't been around. Now you're telling me I she was injured. hurt and she's been on the amazing race, running the race around the world while she's hurt? Jeez. Yeah. Powerful. It never, you know, she really is the quintessential diva. Even an injury can't stop her from running a race. No, never. Uh, we get another backstage kind of um, promo then after this, uh, setting up the design versus Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan. Um, they go, they're sitting together, kind of cutting this promo together, talking a lot about their past together, giving us a detailed history of them coming up through uh, their respective indies, how their careers have kind of been linked and intertwined throughout all of the different places they've went to including it up to when Rich uh, arrived in Impact and we get kind of the scene of Sammy Callahan in OVE offering the position in OVE to Rich Swan, to which Rich refused and then attacked and turned his back on Sammy. Uh, I really liked kind of the touch here where Sammy says, you know, even if we've been on opposite sides of the ring, um, and we're not like working together on the same side. If anybody asks me who the most talented wrestler in the world is, Rich mm-hmm. Swan's going to be the guy I say. And just the way they've kind of built this story up and really kind of sold on these two and how tight they are. Um, I- I'm really enjoying the way that's coming, and, and including the part going back to when Sammy was still in the design and had to mm-hmm. turn on Rich in that uh, number one contenders match and whatnot. The only thing I'm left wondering now is, who's the third? Yeah, I I keep thinking back of like I, I, I kind of want to go back to see like Sammy, Sammy's like past partners or friends to see if I could come up with anybody there. But I love the setting for this one because I feel like it was different from what we've seen before. Having that seen that interview of them talking about each other and the way they brought up you know their background, how long they've known each other. And I love the parts of like, you know, you know, we became best friends and we live together. We travel together, even though we're going to different places and we always kind of meet up back at our place. And it was nice seeing that from how they started up until now. And I like the part of like Rich when he's like, yeah, when uh, when Sammy was destroying Impact and, and here I was supporting Impact and fighting for Impact. Um, and even Sammy says, when I don't like Rich, I can just say he's the most talented human being ever. And a lot of that back and forth they have with it's just like, no, you're great. It's like, no, you're great. And they <laughs> compliment each other, tell each other what they, they both do. Um, but yeah, I just kept thinking back in my mind, who could be that third person? Because I, right now, I don't have a clue. Uh, I'll have to see more about it later. But I do like seeing that connection of like, we go all the way back, not to only Rich Swan's beginning and impact, but like to beginning how they really met and how they became friends. Um and then I love how he goes, oh, yeah, there's like 45 people with the hoodies. They come from under the ring and they come from the side. It's like, like a winning backup. But they, I feel like tonight, at least, I didn't feel like they gave us like a hint as to who that person could be. So I wondered, because the only people that said from Rich and Callahan they mentioned would be the people from OVE. Amber, that's something that it has been talking about for quite a while, that perhaps we see, you know, that OVE being 
like rebranded here in a way uh an impact again so i don't know if that could be the only indication but i feel like other than that we didn't get any clue as to who it could be so i don't know but i overall i love this segment i love the way they built this up in the relationship between both of them and how they gave how they presented it to us on screen here i don't know i don't know who else he can go to here there's even within the current active roster, there's nobody that's really jumping to mind as not really being involved in anything right now. Um, the roster is, yeah. for the most part, feels pretty well used and well rounded, and everybody's doing stuff. Um, the only other person that's had history and impact and history with OBE that I, I don't know is really doing anything else currently would be Madman Fulton. Yeah. He hasn't really been anywhere since getting taken out by Josh and having his contract. And as far as I know, he hasn't hasn't showed up anywhere of really high uh, value or anything. So it might be something where he's he's the next man up, um, making a surprise return, and he'd be somebody big enough to really square off with Khan and have that uh, big man duel. Oh. I didn't say it before, but I can definitely tell you. He was in the audience for the Ring of Honor tapings that I went to at first. So I don't know yeah. if that could be anything going on in the future. Barry, that's somebody who I thought about. And oh my God, I would, break, that would like, oh my God, I would die if he does. Um, but <laughs> I know that we're teasing uh, online of like Jake was like, I don't have, like, he doesn't have a lot going on. Like the aspect that he's not signed. He's doing a lot of indie bookings, but not signed at the moment with any particular company. And I forgot who the second person was. And I was like, I wanted to see Jake something again like, in Impact. I didn't get to watch. I wasn't watching Impact when he was there, and I missed out on that part. And I would like to see him again there. So, I yeah. would love to see Jake something come back to Impact. I was very disappointed when he left for some yeah. other other things. So, if he were to come back and actually get a long run at potentially an X Division or tag title reign and some kind of success in Impact, I would love that for both Impact Wrestling and for Jake something. Yeah. Uh, moving past this segment, we got um, kind of the setup for a future ABC versus Good Hands feud. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, ABC has other things on their hands right now that they're taking on um, Flash Morgan and um, Mark Andrews, uh, what is it, Subculture, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taking on subculture at yeah. Under Siege, but we got the first tastes of the good hands on ABC with Ace Austin taking on Jason Hotch tonight. Uh, Austin obviously accompanied by Bay, Hotch accompanied by both John Schuyler and their supposed new mentor as part of the Learning Tree 2.0, uh, the most professional wrestler, mm -hmm. Brian Myers. There you go. <laughs> yeah, perfect. You even have it loaded up and ready to go. Um, so yeah, Myers joins the learning tree at ringside. Um, I'm calling them the learning tree now. They're not the good hands anymore. They're just learning tree 2.0. <laughs> I was about to say, I, I, we're sticking to this now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we are. He, they, they literally are like, they might as well just become Zicky Dice at this point. <laughs> um, honestly, this match just felt like Ace Austin was in control basically throughout Every so often, Hodge might get a shot in here or there. The only times Hodge really ended up getting an upper hand, though, were when Myers or Skyler at ringside kind of helped him out. You got Myers distracting the ref and Skyler um, interfering to shift the momentum. Swan ends up taking out Skyler, but it, it gave Hodge enough of an upper hand. Um, and then Ace gets a, a perfectly timed sucker punch from Myers, allowing Hotch to get the roll up and a pin over the current champions. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to enjoy this match more than I did. It felt predictable. The fact that they set this up the way they did uh, with the good hands who for the most part have been losing almost nonstop since they formed as a team. Um, Myers injection here gives them a little bit of life, a little bit of newness, a little bit of freshness. And it just felt all along that the foreshadowing was there from commentary and from the match being made that this was a setup where Austin was going to get screwed over to set up the good hands for a future title shot. I kept thinking about that too uh, since the match was announced. 
Uh, very here going. Uh, every time I've seen jo Jason Hodge, I've been impressed. I hope Impact have him signed to a long contract. I don't know for how I not I don't remember specific about that part of it, but yeah, I feel like I I enjoyed the match, but it just like you said, it felt from the get go like one of those matches that was just more like a setup to for the good hands to get that title shot in the future. Um, and I feel like more than anything, I knew that Jason was gonna win it because they have the numbers on their side. Versus we only have Bay and Austin's corner. Um, but yeah, seeing that, it just, it's one of those things that I don't see them winning when the, the match does happen. Because I feel like, you know, BC has that, has been so dominant since they won the titles and even before that too. And to me, it wouldn't be the time for them to lose those titles. But I feel like it would be a good way for Myers to go like, how could you get away after everything? Like I taught you kind of line when they lose that match. Um but yeah, I feel like it will be just a good way for Myers to keep growing with the good hands moving forward. But I just like you said from the get go, I kept thinking uh, this is just a way to set up for a future title shot. That was all I kept thinking. So I knew in my mind Jason was going to win the match somehow. Some kind of interference, just didn't know how that was going to happen. But yeah, in the match itself, like you said, it just felt like most of it was Austin. And Austin is incredible as he is. I feel like they had great chemistry, but it was mostly Austin doing all the moves because Jason really did anything. But um, not saying that Jason was bad or anything like that in like, the match. But that's how it, it was more like it was Ace being like the one calling the, you know, the shot as the match was happening. Um, but yeah, overall, just interesting how it goes moving forward. As Like like I mentioned, that they have the numbers on their side. Do we get somebody from Bullet Club kind of supporting Ace and Bay in that way? So that way they're even. Who knows? That would be the only thing that will kind of find it interesting aside from Myers being that... Um, that teacher going forward for the good hands. Would it be fair to say Ace Austin was the superstar and Jason Hotch was just a good hand? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe. Sorry, couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, we get a little bit of follow-up from last week in the Macklin story next. Um, last week where we had Macklin mad at Singh and Shira about not being there, not having his back, not, you know, not being reliable. Their business relationship was being cut off, resulting in Singh and Shira going off on their own and deciding that they needed to do something to win Macklin back. And so they attacked Heath before the match against Rhino. Now we have Macklin with Singh and Shira basically commending them for what they did, appreciating that they took out Heath for him last week. And then tells them that their business relationship can resume um, and he has another mission and that he doesn't want them to ask questions, just follow orders, like take off to do whatever the mission is. Simple, straightforward. I wish this was how we had set up their business relationship in the first place. Just a quick one minute segment like this to set us up um, right off the bat, but at least they're giving us a little bit more now in terms of behind the scenes to, to keep us filled in on how this relationship is developing. Did you have anything else to add on it? No, I feel the same way. Like, I feel like something like this would have been better if it happened before to kind of give us like connections, like why are they working together? Why does, you know, Matthew just wants to have an extra support and that's why he has them. Um, as you know, as a team helping him, but I would have liked that introduction there first before just randomly, you know, everything that happened beforehand. I think something like this would have made more sense, and then you know, probably the attack on Heath and and Rhino and everything that happened last week, and then something like this happening this week of like, do you want to continue to get on my good side? Let's just you know follow what I'm telling you right now to do this. But building that relationship, I would have preferred seeing that first, and then everything else. But um. This was something simple and to the point, which is exactly what it needed to be. I'm glad it wasn't anything that took a lot of time either for it to set up. But yeah, overall, I wish it would have been first. Yeah. Uh, moving from that short segment, we move to another short kind of story development segment. Uh, Gia Miller is back interviewing Jordan Grace, uh, asks her about Deanna being hurt last week in their tag team match. Um, and possibly not being at 100% next week for Under Siege and how she feels about that. Jordan starts going on about how, you know, that's not what she wanted. She, if she's going to beat Deanna, she wants to do it at full strength um, to be able to beat her at her best so she can say she was the better woman, that it wasn't anything else that helped her get there. Mm -hmm. um, 
for God knows what reason at this point, we have Alicia Edwards come in and intervene. Um, I guess playing devil's advocate, trying to sow the seeds of dissent or something along those lines. Um, Accusing Jordan of letting Deanna get hurt on purpose that, you know, we know what you're all about. You try and play the baby face, but in actuality, you don't want to face Deanna at her best. So you let her take the beating. And then she just walks away. And I'm like, Huh? <laughs> I thought that's the thing when she showed up. I was like, "So how is this connected?" I have no idea. But she didn't just leave though. Uh, Jordan said she was gonna. I don't know how. I forgot what word she said exactly. But she threatened to like hit her, and then she went like back and like, "No, no, no, that's not gonna happen." And she just left. Um, but yeah, I just when when it happened, I was like, "Okay, why are you of all people?" I don't get this. I'm just thinking right, like cause... maybe. Jordan accused her, said something along the lines of like, you want to see someone take a beating? Yeah, something like that. And then but she it's like away. the only thing I get thinking of maybe next week, since Jordan I mean since sorry, since Deanna's not hundred percent, maybe we get Jordan versus Alicia just to give her like a warm up match kind of thing. And then whatever interaction happens with her her and Deanna. But other than that, I'm just like, Why are you really here? How is this any your business? Like why are you defending Deanna in a way? I don't get it. When I saw her there, I was like, I don't know if I'm interested or if I'm curious. I, I don't know how I feel about her showing up here. Um, and like overall, this part, I was like, I could have done without this part happening. Like overall, I would have just done like that. And if you asking Jordan how she felt about knowing that Diana's injured or not 100%, but the Alicia part and everything, I would have done without, to be honest. So, At this point, I feel like whenever Alicia shows up on my screen, she's just there to take a beating. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, I'll, I'll let you kind of lead us into the next because I feel like you ha- have a lot to say about the next match here. <laughs> so Barry, not Alicia wrestling. Nothing's ever good at that about Alicia. Yeah, I, I'm. I don't. I, I hate agreeing with that, but yeah, I have to agree you, with. You <laughs> sure you don't want a ride or die T-shirt, Astrid? <laughs> No, I like the green jacket though, but I like the Eddie version. I don't care about hers. So. I'm okay with that too. Um, I like how you said I like for me to talk about like having a lot to say about the next part, but it's funny because this is the part that I I decided to take no notes on it, like whatsoever on what was happening. I guess I was enjoying the match so much that I didn't want to break out of it to take a note and miss something. So I can't really specify like the moveset or anything that happened, but I can just say is like Trin has, been, you know, she did sort of an incredible job for somebody that has been off the ring for a year at this point. Um, she didn't feel like she missed a beat. And like if you would have told me like that she missed a year in the uh, of wrestling, I wouldn't have believed you because it didn't feel that way in this match. And I'm glad that this match was with Kylie King and not Taylor Wilde. Thank God, um, because I feel like the match in itself, I feel like it was a great experience for Kylie King to be in this match. I feel like even with both of their different styles, they complemented each other so well. And even when you know that Kylie is not really like, like a fast paced kind of person, like it still had a fast pace within the match tonight. And I feel like it me- they meshed so well together. I would not mind seeing this match again later. I may go back and kind of watch this, just this particular match, but I feel like they killed it. They did incredible with it. Um, I had seen a little bit of like what the ending looked like from the tapings before, so I wasn't surprised that Trin won either way. You know that Trin is going to win, being that it's her debut match, but I feel like they did what they had to do. I I was just I was just glad it it was really well received. Um, I'm, I just want to see what other people are saying about it online because I know that people are going to be supporting it as well. But overall, I these two, I I hope they do I have another match later on because it was so well done. Um, the, I did wonder though if being that she pinned one of the tag team champions, if something will be involving that a little bit later, perhaps, or if it's just like a one thing just because it's a debut and that's about it. So curious about moving forward, how if that will be connected in any, any way, shape or form. But these two just did incredible together. I feel like they have such great chemistry. I'm glad that Kylie got the opportunity to be Trin's debut much in impact. Yeah, I definitely echo a lot of those same feelings. Um, I, I thought she looked great for her debut match. Um, I, I noted that I thought Kylan was a perfect first opponent, um, specifically with Taylor Wilde at ringside. 
to really just put Trinity in peril for a lot of the time. It didn't feel like your typical debut where, you know, you, you can see them easily on the path to victory and it's just, you know, you take a move here or there, but really the, the debuting star has the majority offense in this one. It felt like Trinity really was in peril at a couple different points because she was dealing with the numbers working against her and Taylor Wilde, as much as we harp on her for her in ring since she's returned, she does still have some redeeming qualities as a tag team partner and as an outside interference member. Mm. Um, A couple notes that I took off this match. And this is coming off of like last week and just some general feelings about Trinity and her time as Naomi as well. Um, I would like to see Trinity use that top rope blockbuster as a finisher moving forward. I thought that was clean. It was crisp. Kylan took it great. Trinity looked great hitting it. I know it's awkward sometimes to use a top rope move as your finisher. In comparison to the rear view, I will take that blockbuster and 99 times out of 100. Absolutely. The rear view has a one-off where maybe it works mm-hmm. in a given situation, but that blockbuster should be her finishing move going forward. <laughs> oh, uh, Barry, okay. in peril of having a tarot card waved at her in a spooky way. I, I mean, sure, but it did still work um, for the numbers to work against her. Um Luckily, we didn't have to deal with the rearview as the finish in this one, though, because Trinity pulled out the starstruck submission that she has used in the past as well and gave us a submission win for her first win in Impact Wrestling, somewhat surprisingly, but very deservedly. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't the rear view because I had never liked the rear view. I really haven't. <laughs> I'm glad that's not her finisher in any shape or form in here because I don't want to see it like happening like often like that. But yeah, overall, I I love the match between these two. They, they did incredible. Like I definitely have only positive things to say about it. The rear view is just so awful for someone who should be taken as a threat. And she used it last week when she came out to save Jordan from the mm-hmm. coven. She used the rear view on Kylan King, which kind of set up this match. And I was, after her debut two weeks ago, I was hoping that it wouldn't be the case. And then she hit it last week. I was like, oh God, she's actually going to use it as her finisher, isn't she? (laughs) So I was very thankful that she didn't this week, Mm -hmm. um, today. But I, I do feel like she needs to just either get rid of it or just save it as a fun move for the middle of the match, not a move that you're going to win championships with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, after the match Trinity's celebration is cut short as Jay Vidal comes out to the quintessential Divas theme music Um, he proceeds to announce that Giselle has accepted the challenge for under siege Uh, and then he tries to slap Trinity but Trin catches it and kicks him in the head and says she will meet Giselle in under siege next week yeah, I didn't like the, the part of, like, I'm, like, torn about it because I'm not saying Giselle's bad, but she's not one of my favorites. So I wonder how this will go, but I wonder how their styles are going to blend in together. That's the part I'm curious about. Uh, the only part I didn't like it was, like, I feel like Jay took a little bit long, but, like, when he turned around and, like, to do the slap, he took a little bit too long, and I'm like, just do it already. Made it very, very obvious because if you're watching, he's got his hand and he's like yeah. twitching, like he's mm-hmm. he's nervous about mm-hmm. slapping. And then when he finally turns around, it's too late. Um, I was <laughs> like, you could have done it a little bit faster. That would have been fine with it, but he took so long that this one, like, we're just gonna get a slap. Got to be careful it. though. So I, you're knocking Parrish's girl. Can't knock Giselle. Parrish will come after you. No, I was saying about Jay. I didn't say about Giselle. I didn't like the, the Jay slap. It's the part that I was like, eh. Um, no, but you I said you're not that. a big fan of Giselle in the ring for next week. I didn't say she was bad. I'm just saying she's not <laughs> one, of, one of my favorites. And who cares about Paris things anyway? <laughs> He's going to see this at, at some point as it is. So Yeah. Uh, once we finish this segment, we go backstage to find out what Macklin's mission was. As him and <laughs> Singh and Shira approach and ambush PCO backstage. Uh, They beat him down, they kick him around, and then Macklin shatters a couple of cement blocks across the back of PCO while he's laying on the ground, leaving PCO howling in pain. 
the only thing I can think of as I'm watching this, please bring Vincent back. Please, please, please bring Vincent back. I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing. I just, PCO needs Vincent. No, Vincent is occupied in Ring of Honor right now. So, unfortunately, he won't be back. <laughs> uh, the only thing I get, the only thing I would have wished was what happened is the same thing as it happened last week that we got everything kind of like in one take. It was almost up in a row. And I would have liked if, let's say, they did, oh, yeah, let's do follow my orders. And like maybe you kind of see them walking somewhere. And then, not even probably like a couple seconds later, you see the part with PCO, like rather than us having to wait. Because I feel like this is, I, I could have done like a sequence. It would have been yeah. better for me, like how it was yes, last week. It felt more like a story. Um, just the part with like the cement, they just, okay, I guess. I just, I, I was curious what you would think about it when you saw it. Because I was like, that was a meh for me. I was like, I, that's not what I expected it. I prefer more the choke slam the way he did it than everything else. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, PCO is going to bounce back from this. He's, He's not human. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did actually enjoy the next segment a little bit more um, because after no mention of it whatsoever last week, this week we go back to the undead realm door and find Jessica there just staring at an hourglass, watching the sands <laughs> fall, waiting for Rosemary to come back. Uh, the coven approach and tell her to go find Rosemary which Jessica's like, I can't. The door's locked. Rosemary's like, well, I can let you in. And they have this fun little back and forth where they're arguing about whether or not Rosemary, or uh, Taylor Wilde, rather, has enough magic to open the door. Mm -hmm. And Jessica saying, Rosemary doesn't want me to go in there. Um, and then she calls out that uh, if Taylor Wilde's magic was actually that strong, she would have seen Kylan King's loss and Wilde turns it around saying she didn't lose. She was just setting the groundwork for what's to come. So more teases of Jessica going to the undead realm. But also, mm -hmm. do we care about what's to come? No. <laughs> I really don't. I love more like the part of like Jessica and the back and forth they had than that answer. Um, I love her having her with like the sand clock and just waiting for it. And it was like, it's been a whole week and it still has like what this much left in it, supposedly. Um, but I love how she's like, oh, yeah, she's always to stay away from the magic and not to go in the room. And then Taylor is saying, oh, I, have, I can ask the spirit to unlock it. And she goes, well, they told me you're not powerful enough to do that. And then I think it was Kylie that said, uh, Rosemary isn't always right. Um, but I love the back and forth they had between these two here. It was funny. And it was exactly what I needed to have give us that like kind of like progress report of what's going on between them. And we still have Jessica here waiting for Rose, maybe for now it seems. But yeah, I'm not <laughs> interested in what's going to happen next with the coven in there. Uh, to be specific, what we tell a while. But yeah, no, not my thing. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, Jody Threat was in action next uh, against a local talent by the name of Sierra. Uh, do you have any familiarity with Sierra, and what did you think of the match? I was like, I, I know I've seen a little bits and pieces of her, and um, oh yeah, <laughs> um, Barry saying, if you don't mind me going back, my main health and safety were with PCO. But if someone put fly in the cardboard boxes on those floor blockings at the fire escape, there's from up. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, we don't mind you going back to it, just so you know. No, they, they um, wouldn't block no, no, it from opening because they're fire escape. They have to push. They don't pull in. I I was questioning the cardboard, too, and then I just assumed that this is a beat-up old arena and they must have cardboard down because they can't afford floor mats and that's where you're supposed to kick the dirt off your shoes. <laughs> you wouldn't know more than I do. You work in that type of building. <laughs> I don't know. We're in a warehouse. It does not work the same way. I'll tell you that. Um, but no, I seen a little bit some pieces of uh, Sierra on social media. Um, nothing out of the ordinary here was what we've seen from Jody so far. Her having, I like that her, the people that she's gone against, they actually put the nameplates for her and for them because I feel like I'm used to like an NXT that used to be like, oh, local competitor here. And I remember one of them being Liv Morgan, uh, beforehand. I forgot, I forgot if it was Eva Marie, but it was like Eva Marie versus local competitor, and then it'll be Liv, Liv at the end. 
So see, I, pre I prefer them having the nameplates and them giving them their actual names in here while they're using them so we don't forget who they are. But it just, yeah. it's a match that just doesn't last too long. Jo you know, Jody is in control. Jody gets the win. Um, I'm just curious. I, I like Jody and how it's going right now, the direction, but I wonder how much longer this is going to last before she gets to do something more permanent with somebody from the roster, not just somebody else coming in and doing that, you know, that type of quick match. Um, because we had that tease with like her and Taylor rising, but it was really short lived. So we really haven't had anything of anybody going like, I want to go against you and really kind of be that challenge for you versus the people that you had before kind of thing. Um, so like, I'm curious to like moving forward, who will be that person in that role? Because I don't, I don't want to see this going for too long because I feel like it's going to get too repetitive versus we also have this similarly kind of happening with Jade and AEW of we have her going against, you know, certain people that only have one match, maybe two with her and then they're gone. And it's been what, maybe a year of her being champion or her being undefeated in this way. And it just at a point that I want her to list that championship so we can gain kind of more curiosity and go like, we want to see her doing something different. I would like to see her chase that championship instead of keeping it. So that's why I hope that it doesn't be in the, it's not in the same direction that like goes with Jody. That like we get to see the same things so at this point. We're like, you know, it's going to be a, a typical Jody match. I feel like she can do more than what she's doing right now. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we're only a month removed from Jody's arrival. Uh, I think this is only like her third or fourth match. And she did have the brief little thing with Alicia there. Um, I'm okay with a certain amount of local talent squash matches um, just for talent coming in to kind of familiar, familiarize themselves with the crowd and with the audience so that they understand what the talent is about and the talent understands how the crowd reacts to certain stuff. Mm -hmm. um, also just the pacing of a match and putting together and understanding like cameras and locations and different mm -hmm. things like that. In this case with Jody. Um, this match just felt like more of the same. Um, I don't really feel like she really advanced or progressed anything with it. Sierra didn't really stand out in any way to me. She was just another local talent. Um, I know with like with uh, Rising when they wrestled, it kind of Rising really impressed mm -hmm. me with what she did. With the other local talent from the Rebellion Fallout show, I was impressed with her. She had a little bit of charisma. She had a little bit of attitude. She had. Um, yeah. she could carry her own in the ring with Jody. With Sierra, it just felt like she was just there. It was just some random name they pulled out of the crowd. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to see Jody keep progressing, but if it's a matter of her just really getting established, um, you know, we saw it with Killer Kelly, we saw it with Masha Slamovich, we've seen it mm -hmm. with a number of different people in in Impact over the last little bit that coming in and having a couple months of building yourself up before really taking on an established name is usually a pretty solid way of, of getting established on the roster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't last too long because I, I want to see Jody have longer matches and be able to show up more of what she does. And I feel like we haven't gotten much of that. So that's what I, I want to see moving forward from this. I hope it doesn't take too long for them to get there, though. Um, that's why I want to. That's why I'm comparing it to the Jade situation because Jade has been a year of basically the same thing. So I just want to see something different from her. So that's why I, I hope they don't. I know that's a good way to give us a this foundation of Jade's character. We can't compare Impact to NXT. <laughs> no, it's AW, not NXT. Um, no. But oh, I just right. I, Jade Cargill. I, like I thought it, you were talking about Cora Jade. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> It uh, is very sad. I wouldn't mind seeing Jody Threat helping Trinity, which is all Sean and Sarah and Seven and Everyone. See, that would be a good idea. Um, I feel like you said it's a good foundation for them. I just don't want it to last too, too long. Um, that's the only hope that I have with the Jody thing, because I want to see more from her and like have her have longer matches. I mean, Barry, we're still kind of missing Tasha in that story. Where is Tasha right now? <laughs> that one, I don't know where she's at. Uh, the next segment we got, I'm going to preface this first because I feel like I need to. Mm -hmm. I hadn't paid very close of attention leading up to tonight to who was on the two teams of our six-man tag that we had in the main event. So we go backstage where Frankie Kazarian is just sitting and he gets approached by the Edwards couple, Eddie and Alicia. Mm -hmm. And Eddie says they need to be on the same page tonight 
that he's watched Kazarian's interviews over the last couple weeks and understands he wants to be the veteran and the leader and they can't both be ring generals tonight. And I'm sitting here like, wait a second. How did Frankie Kazarian and Eddie Edwards end up as teammates in this match? Yeah. And then Kaz agrees that, you know, he'll be loyal, Eddie's loyal soldier tonight. And then he throws it in his face. Just hope this one goes better than honor no more. I'm like, oof, I want to hurt. <laughs> That's exactly how I reacted when I saw the match announcement oh. with Parrish last week. I just kept thinking, one of them doesn't fit with the other ones here. And that was interesting. Um, I kept thinking, well, I guess there's too many faces so they can have you know, four on two. So yeah. they had to pull somebody from the other side to make it even. But I was curious of why Kaz was that person out of like the four faces that was pulled to this side to be with the heels. I thought that was really interesting seeing the graphic. I was like, am I dreaming? I thought it would have been like, I'm like, we're not going to get everybody want like the, everybody together as a six person match because that's what's happening at the pay-per-view. So I was like, wait, so it is a tag team. So it is a three and three. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that at first. Uh, but yeah, it was something that it took me a little bit to get used to seeing Cass on the other side with the heels. I feel like I need to go back to my Sesame Street days and just start singing, one of these things just doesn't belong here. <laughs> I'll tell you, one of these things is not like the other one. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it was very um, weird to see it. It definitely sets up in such a way that you feel like these two probably have a story going forward, uh, the way the match plays out too. And we'll get to that in a second here. Um, but it, it looks like we're probably looking at Frankie and Eddie spending some time pairing off in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> Mary. I want to congratulate Alicia on her pointing, top quality pointing. It was in the right direction and everything. She found something she's got. I have, I have no words. I really don't. Oh, Barry. <laughs> I guess that's I always love having yeah. you in the comments, Barry. <laughs> always. <laughs> um, I'm going to go into my favorite part of the night next. Yeah, I figured it was. <laughs> um, Detective Dango is back with Swinger and Zicky Dice uh, discussing after last week's match between Dango and Swinger that... He's convinced that they are not capable of pulling off the attack on Santino, so he has cleared their name and knows that it's not them. But then I missed what Swinger or Zicky said specifically that pointed the finger at Joe Hendry. To which... <sighs> I, I, I don't caught that they like said the something... Interaction... I didn't remember if it was the interaction they had last week, but I just love how it started with like the part of Dango saying like say his name, and then obviously the, the song just happened, yeah. and, I, and I ended yeah. up clapping to it. I was Dango's like, watching like the you said something there. You said something about someone. It could be yeah. say his name, and then we get Joe Hendry, our Lord and Savior, um, arrives <laughs> and pops up on screen, um, and Dango starts accusing him of being the one who potentially attacked Santino. Um, Hendry gets mad at Dango. They start going back and forth. Joe Hendry rips open Dango's shirt and reveals a patch of missing chest hair. So we now know where Santino ripped the hair from. <laughs> um, to which Swinger or Zicky, one of them, points out, that's why you wore a shirt to wrestle last week. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just feel fulfilled. Because I, I feel like I called this and I feel happy that I did. That Dango is the one who attacked Santino. Dango is the villain. The uh, director of the Port Authority as Johnny Swinger called it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then yes. after the reveal, Dango then attacks Henry, bounces his head off of the web of lies on the wall. And I assume we must be getting Dango versus Hendry out of this. And I'm also assuming Hendry yeah. must not be going to Dango's birthday party. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if it happens. Um, no, but I, even before this, uh, 
Joe was saying something like, oh, I'm champion. So, like, the way he was saying, like, he's champion made me think of, like, this is definitely going to be the, the next championship match. Um, I'm guessing for Under Siege, most likely. Um, but I love this segment even last week, even talking to Parrish uh, about it as we discussed it, because I I just kept thinking it would have been so nice to get a swerve and, you know, see Joe being that person that did a tag sense, you know, and, like, kind of saying to the audience, like, I manipulated you this whole time with, like, my moves set and, like, my hands and the clapping and the song and you guys just fell for it. Like, I would have loved to see that on the screen. But um, I love that part of, like, the review of Dango doing it. And then the way he's like, oh, that's why you wear a shirt where you were wrestling. And I keep thinking now, I was like, oh, so he attacked him with a shirt on and He definitely, like, went like this to kind of defend mm-hmm. himself or try to grab him. And that's how he has missing hair. Um but even like Joe, I, I like the relationship that Joe and Dango have had. So I'm just kind of like, it's bittersweet that it's over already. Like this. Uh, I feel like they have such good chemistry. And then I like when Joe came in, the first thing is like, oh, you're continuing the investigation without me? Like, why? Why would you do that? Like, we've been working on this together. So I love that between them. But it was just, I, I love the review. It was funny. I just would have loved if it was Joe Henry to give us like, a kind of different swerve here. But I love. I am just sad the relationships over between them. I'm just waiting for that match graphic to come up for Under Siege, though. It's I love that the the reveal was the chest hair, though. Of all things, like it <laughs> wasn't a bald spot on your head. It wasn't anything else. It was, you know, there's the missing hair from his chest, and it all makes sense as to why Dango lost the hair because the hair would have incriminated himself. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I am excited for for heel Dango, though. I'm very excited for this. Um, You know, I kind of pieced it together based on the fact that when he signed his contract, he was talking about getting to play a more serious role and be more serious and not be the funny guy that he's been um, other places for extended periods of time. So really want to see him go forward in this and have success in being a top heel Mm -hmm. within Impact. Yeah, I feel like it's a good opportunity for him to bring something different to the table from what he's done in the past. And I feel like him and Shore are definitely going to have a great match either way. So I'm just excited for the match in itself and for Dango moving forward. Yeah. Um, we got the layout for the next couple cards, um, or at least a, a little bit for next week's show. We got confirmation of Rich Swan versus Angels, and we got Speedball Mike Bailey versus Chris Sabin. Um, At some point on this show, they also did mention that Speedball is heading over to Japan to take part in the Best of the Super Junior Tournament. Um, And then for Under Siege next week, so far confirmed, we have Trinity taking on Giselle Shaw, The Design taking on Rich Swan, Sammy Callahan, and a third partner to be determined. We have Subculture of Flash Morgan Webster and Mark Andrews taking on the Ace and Bay Club. We have Trey Miguel defending his X Division title versus Chris Sabin. We have the six person number one contender for the world title match uh, Moose versus Eddie Edwards versus Jonathan Gresham versus Yu Yu Amora versus Alex Shelley versus Frankie Kazarian. We have Deanna Perrazzo versus Jordan Grace for the Knockouts title. If Jordan loses, she is not allowed to con- to challenge Deanna for the title again for as long as Deanna is champion. And we have Macklin defending his newly won world title versus PCO. Everything else. And we're still probably waiting for uh, Dango and Joe Henry to be announced if it is for yeah. the pay-per-view. So that's probably the only one we got left, but I think that doesn't have a graphic. Maybe. Yeah. And as Mel says, Mike is doing amazing in the Battle of Super Juniors. Very happy to hear that. Very happy to see that. Um, Speedball is amazing. He does amazing things everywhere he's been. And his Twitter is always amazing between him and Veda because they clearly love each other very much. And Veda has been tweeting all week how much they miss Speedball. (laughs) (laughs) Then we get to the main event. And the six-man tag match that I couldn't remember who was on what team. So let me let me clarify here. <laughs> it was Moose, Eddie Edwards, and Frankie Kazarian, somehow, taking on Jonathan Gresham, Yuyo Amora, and Alex Shelley. And ultimately, it makes sense once you've seen the match why Frankie was put in the position he was. It makes zero sense going into the match why Frankie was put where he was. 
Hello, Corey. Thank you. Uh, this people has absolutely been tearing up and best of super juniors doing impact proud as always. Oh, yeah. I, I'm glad he was part of it. And I think he, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if it was the first promo he did or not, but he did it in Japanese too. And I was like, you know, top notch. I, I love it. I love that New Japan is giving this spotlight to impact wrestling as well. Like they've got their partnership. We've had Multiverse United earlier this year. We get Multiverse United later this year. Last year, we had Ace Austin in the Best of the Super Juniors. We had Ace and Bay in the um, the Junior Tag League. Um, it, it's really, really awesome to see Impact performers getting that chance to get out and shine. And as Mel says, going the other way as well, Uomura getting the chance to yeah. shine. And, and that was one of my notes about this match here is as much as the commentary spent a lot of time focusing on Frankie Kazarian and Eddie Edwards talking about Kaz as a veteran presence in the locker room, wanting to help the young guys. He's in a match here where he's not with a lot of young guys. These are all veterans. Frankie's not doing any real benefit to the young guns by being in a match with vets. But Uemura being in this match is huge for Yuyo. Um, I feel like for him being able to work a match both here in this six man and next week in the number one contenders match, He's getting miles and miles of experience under his belt, being able to work with five very talented former Impact champions, whether they're X Division champions, world champions, or tag champions. You know, either way, these are all guys who have won multiple championships in their careers in Impact, mm -hmm. and Yuya is being slotted up right alongside all five of them, and that's great mm -hmm. for him, great for his development, and really awesome to see that Impact and NJPW have that partnership between them where they can work in such a way yeah and this is another match for me that aside from trinity and kylie king at the beginning i feel like i couldn't take notes on it because i feel like it was such a great like back and forth between everybody that was another one that was so fast paced i feel like i couldn't keep up with everybody anyway <laughs> to take notes um but like you what you said at, at the beginning the the thing that i really caught on from this was it's definitely going to be Cass and Eddie probably after this, after the number one contenders match is happening under siege. Um, as you see Cass versus Eddie moving forward after that happens. Um, and that's what made me think of like, so this is why, you know, Cass was putting in this tag team and this side of the tag team match is, uh, is to move this forward after the pay-per-view. But um, other than that, I feel like it was a great match. I love the, you know, everything from the both teams and the way it played out um, on screen. Shelly getting that, you know, that pinfall win for the team at the end. It just, I, I feel like I love the, the main event. Yeah. You know, the, the constant bickering and back and forth between Kaz and Eddie, um, ultimately leading to the end of the match where they turned on each other, even though they're partners and Kaz leaves Eddie laid out in the ring and takes the, the team loss to rid himself of the Eddie Edwards problem. Um, really nice to see Alex Shelley get the pin here. Um, Reverse momentum theory would suggest Alex Shelley probably isn't winning the number one contenders now next week, which makes me question if if Eddie and Frankie are in a program coming out of this, and if Alex mm -hmm. isn't winning since he just won the tag match, which would suggest he probably isn't getting the pin again next week. Jonathan Gresham's the only one that makes sense, right? Yeah, because uh, definitely not most. Um, yeah, I feel like if you think about it from like that face heel dynamic, Gresham will be the one, if anything, um, because I I don't see Shelly breaking off. Like you said, it after having that pin, I don't think he's winning it. Plus, it's one of those like you see him and Saban. I don't I don't think either one of them is gonna win their match, and it's gonna continue on with them being a tag team. I don't see them doing anything individually for the time being. So to me, seeing like the people in the six man tag being that they're the ones in the match are under siege, Gresham will be the only one that I get pinpoint from here. I was I was personally hoping that Alex Shelley would end up taking the six man, and maybe he still will. Maybe you know it's a, a double swerve here. It's you know he won, so we think he's not going to win, and then he does win anyhow. Who knows? Um, it, it's definitely the story that has at least something to it. Him going off talking about how he's never won the championship, and now he's going to. Um, Frankie had his program with Macklin before Macklin won the title, so I don't think he'd really be in a position to go and challenge for the title now. Uamora, it would be weird to have him going for a world title right now. So, yeah. and I mean, Moose versus Macklin, there's some history there, but I don't think that's a route they'd go down either. Mm -hmm. So, feels like we're probably looking at either Gresham or Shelley versus Macklin coming out of, of Under Siege. 
Yeah, and as Barry said, I, I really love this comment. This is like exactly how I would um, summarize it. Uh, this is what a promotion relationship should be, ben- both benefiting exactly what AD- the, AD- the AEW stuff wasn't. Um, and that's exactly how I felt about it. I feel like they have a good balance of like, there's always somebody from New Japan and Impact and vice versa. And I feel like it's not one of those battles of like, you, yeah, you're, if my guy is there, my guy has to win. And we don't have that, you know, the relationship isn't like that. Um, so that's what I like about it, that we have a good back and forth between both companies. And not only that, but having it result in Multiverse United, United as well. I feel like exactly what it should be. And I'm glad it's happening this way. I guess I, for us, if you think about it from this aspect, from us, Impact has really been that forbidden door more than any other company in wrestling right now. And, and as Barry says in this in here too, I uh, really enjoyed the six, six men as well. Everyone had their few minutes. Yeah, I feel like everybody had like a good spotlight in here as well. So it was a great balance between everybody in this match. And did you think about it, it kind of makes you think of like all the possibilities that could be moving forward for Macklin, even though we know only one of them has to win it. Um, and yeah, I totally agree. It's like Ella Shelley des- really deserves it. Yeah, I just I was stuck between Shelly and Gresham, but I hope because of the fan, probably Gresham will get it. So that'll be like an interesting dynamic moving forward if it is Gresham and Macklin. Yeah, uh, just going back to Barry's comment about this is what a promotion relationship should be. Um, you know, I was I wasn't watching at the time, so it hadn't really clicked in my head until just recently. But the current IWGP World Champion also did his excursion in Impact Wrestling, just as Yuya Uemura is doing right now, and is a Mm -hmm. former X Division champion as well. Sonata came through the ranks the same way Uemura is doing. He fought through, he battled his way through the Impact Wrestling roster, went back to Japan, joined LIJ, worked his way back up there, and is now world champion. Yuya Uemura is on a great path here. I think he's doing great things with great people in impact wrestling. And when he decides to make that return or gets brought back to new Japan and goes back home to wrestle where he came from as no longer a young lion, I am excited to see what Uemura can do back in Japan again. Yeah. I'd like, I feel like Barry's comment is the one that summarizes that relationship best. This is what the promotional, like the relationship between both promotions should be like. It's, I feel like it's very well balanced and that's what I love about this relationship between Impact and New Japan. Because even as somebody that doesn't watch New Japan, I love seeing the clips online from what I see because you do see that back and forth and then it intrigues you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, That is the show for today. That was everything that happened on Impact on Access tonight. Uh, This has been Making an Impact. Astrid, where can people find you? Uh, firstly, uh, tomorrow uh, we have Ladies Special Showcase. We will be discussing a little bit about Trinity's debut. I want to get uh, Mel's point on this. And we're going to be reflecting back, as I said earlier, This it's been a year since Sasha and Naomi have left WWE to be Mercedes and Trinity now. So we definitely want to reflect back of what it's been of a year later um, than where they are now outside of WWE and how the careers have changed. Um, so we want to really focus on that there. And um, I know with the weekend, there's a lot going on as well. Uh, so what next weekend, between all the papers and everything going on, um, subscribe to the channel if we can, to the YouTube channel, and then with all our local establishments because we have a lot going on next weekend. Um, I know we have between us and Impact and, you know, being Battleground and not a champion. So there's a lot going on. Um, I know that Ed and I have a preview show. Uh, I logged the guest for that. So we do have a preview show for Battleground next week. So watch it on our socials when we announce what that would air. Um, on the YouTube channels and I also have a, a guest for the Battleground Pro Show because Ed will not be with me he will be attending Battleground himself so I definitely have two special guests coming up for shows so um, we'll be announcing them on social media in this, in this coming week uh, so definitely excited to be working with the two of my favorite people um, but yeah aside from that you can catch me again on Taking Over with Ed like I mentioned Tuesday we discuss NXT um, so we definitely won't be giving our predictions because we'll wait for the preview show to do that now uh, which is really exciting to we're going to be moving forward while we're doing preview shows for the big uh, PLEs that NXT has and again doing here at, uh, making an impact with you on Thursdays and if you haven't yet you can go back to my YouTube channel I do have uh, the latest episode of Killer Cuts with Bobby we talk about the movie Sick that is uh, streaming on Peacock right now in the US 
And I do have an interview I'm recording for Ashford Das this weekend uh, with Alyssa Moreno. So if you have any questions for her, uh, let me know. I'll be recording it with her uh, for the weekend and probably releasing it sometime next weekend as well. But yeah, I feel like the next two weeks are going to be busy and exciting in so many different ways. So I'm lo like looking forward to everything that's going on. Um, so if you haven't yet, follow me on my socials. Um, my Instagram, sorry, my Twitter is Ashford Pizarro. It is there. And my Instagram is Ashford Pizarro 20. And then I will say, watch out for our local scholarships because we definitely have a lot. That calendar is going to be so full this week uh, between, you know, AEW and NXT and WWE going on next week. And so definitely exciting. I'm really excited for next weekend. It's going to be busy. Sounds like it. Sounds like you're going to be crazy busy with all the content. Myself, not so much. I, I'm here Thursday nights. Most Thursday nights, I'll be here consistently for a few weeks coming up now. Hopefully, I don't have anything on the go as far as I can see. Um, you can follow me on the Twitter, at Cody Defoe. Uh, give me a shout on there. Give me a follow. Hit me up. We can talk some Impact Wrestling. Uh, anything wrestling related, sports related, all of that kind of stuff. If you haven't already, uh, I actually was a part of a Marvel review with Oled and Andre on our local establishment last week as we gave our thoughts and review of Guardians of the Galaxy 3. If you've watched it, you want to pop in, uh, drop a comment on what you thought on it and with us. Um, I'll be on periodically with different uh, Marvel reviews going forward in the future with them, so keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, just every Thursday, if you miss us on the live broadcast here on Thursdays on Astrid's Twitch and YouTube, you can always subscribe to Backbreaker Media on YouTube. We drop the replay of our Impact Reviews every Monday morning on Backbreaker Media. Um, really appreciate everything that Backbreaker is doing to help us out and get us uh, some views on here. So drop a like, drop a subscribe on them and pop in live with us on Thursdays and join the conversation. Uh, everybody that was there tonight, we always appreciate you. Barry, Mel, Corey, um, we had Ed in there. Everyone who's in our comments, we always appreciate you joining our conversations and love to have you drop a line on what you thought on our show and on the Impact shows as well. And as Mel says, June 8th, top talent. I haven't bought a ticket yet, Mel. Uh, I'm still debating on it. There's not much on that card that's jumped out at me yet. But potentially, I will miss an Impact episode for June 8th if I do decide to buy a ticket and go to that. Why are you reminding him, Mel? Why? We were doing <laughs> fine up until you said that. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> I guess I'm working for <laughs> I'm glad he was in the chat when this happened. Ew, you got called down too. Keep it going, people. Keep it going. Let's shame him for missing another <laughs> show. Um, no, but I did really want to uh, thank back again our parish for being with me uh, last week. It was fun to discuss the show with him. I haven't done a show with him in quite a while. I always have Ed uh, jumping in with me, so I do appreciate Parrish for coming in um, ahead of time to uh, help me. So I wouldn't have to do a show alone. <clears throat> so... Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. We appreciate you. And I did want to say thank you because I think, if I'm not mistaken, I see I saw that we have 700 subscribers on Backbreaker Media. So congrats to not only us, but, you know, Andre and Mel, who always put so much content on there as well. Um, but, yeah, I just want to thank everybody for the support. Uh, watch out for our socials when we announce things happening because, obviously, we have Under Siege that we have to discuss soon. So, yeah, definitely a lot of exciting things coming in the next, like, two weeks or so. So, um, thank you everybody again. Um, but yeah, we'll see you guys next week. I hope. No, I'm kidding. We'll wait. <laughs>